Open the medullary cavity at the highest point of the humeral head with the awl, centered and parallel to the stem axis. Ream open the medullary space and leave the guide rod in place. Assemble the resection guide for the right or left side. Use the glider resection guide angled by 155 degrees. Set the desired retro version by aligning the alignment rod or the Kirschner wire on the forearm. Use the stylus to fine-tune the retro torsion and resection height according to the anatomical conditions. Insert two 3.2 mm pins through the pre-drilled holes. Removal of all instruments except the sawing block. If necessary, use the stylus again to check the resection height and retro version once more. Resect the humeral head through the slot of the cutting block. If resection should be necessary, transfer the cutting block into the pins via the proximal holes and saw again. Remove all instruments and check the height of the humeral cut. Insert the retro torsion guide and use the lateral and medial slots to mark the correct alignment of the rasp. Lock the rasp firmly in the positioner. Screw the alignment rod into the hole corresponding to the desired retro version. Align the alignment rod parallel with the forearm. Gradually rasp open the medullary cavity. The correct depth has been reached when the laser marking on the positioner is in line with the resection plane. With the humeral Remo 1, the proximal part of the stem is reamed via the inserted rasp. To complete the humeral preparation, remove the rasp and finish the reaming of the metaphyseal cavity with the humeral reamer 2. Screw the guiding bolt onto the appropriate inverse stem or a trial stem. Lock the stem firmly into the positioner and insert it into the humerus. Remove the positioner and the guiding bolt. Use a cover disc to protect the humeral resection surface and the implant during preparation of the glenoid. Align the K-wire guide with the inferior rim of the glenoid and insert the Kirschner wire. A zero degree and a 10 degree K-wire guide are available. The modular glenoid reamer is inserted via the Kirschner wire. Ream the glenoid. Keep in the subchondral bone. The glenoid reamer 42 is used to remove osseous protrusions that could otherwise prevent a snap-in of the glenosphere. To prepare the holes for the pegs, slide the metaglean drill guide over the Kirschner wire. Use the drill metaglean. Insert the fixation pin to prevent rotation of the guide. Drill the second anchoring hole. Screw the adapter onto the impactor and place the metaglean onto the adapter. The metaglean is implanted with carefully controlled hammer strokes until it abuts flatly on the resected glenoid surface. Hold the drill guide into the screw holes in the metaglean and drill the holes for the screws in parallel or slightly convergent orientation relative to the pegs of the metaglean. The screws can be aligned with an angular freedom of plus minus eight degrees. Measure the depth of the holes within the depth gauge LC in order to determine the appropriate screw length. Insert the two screws with the screwdriver T20 and tighten them alternately. Analogous insertion of the superior screw. 
The superior screw can be oriented with an angular freedom of plus minus 10 degrees to the neutral axis of 20 degrees. The superior screw must be locked with the cap in order to lock the desired screw angle. Align the locking cap with the neutral screw orientation of 20 degrees and the concave side facing the screw. Tighten the cap with the torque wrench until it clicks. The trial glenosphere can be mounted and secured for a trial reduction. Insert the trial inlay. Perform the reduction and verify the function. After choosing the glenosphere and inlay sizes, place the definitive glenosphere into the metaglene. Screw in the metaglene assembly rod and then screw the glenosphere pusher over the metaglene assembly rod. This will snap the glenosphere onto the metaglene. Check the complete connection between glenosphere and metaglene. The superior cutoff of the glenosphere needs to be flush with the metaglene. Finally, screw in the fixation screw to secure the glenosphere. Remove the trial inlay with the inlay extractor. Insert the inlay. Ensure that the lateral laser marking of the inlay is precisely aligned with the stem marking. Definitive fixation of the inlay is achieved by applying a distinctive hammer stroke onto the impactor in axial direction. Perform the reduction and verify the function. <laughs>